Hello and welcome to the form book, looking ahead to the world's most famous chase, the Randolph's Grand National. £1 million up for grabs, 34 runners, 30 fences to jump on Merseyside. Who's going to come out on top in the Nash? <laughs> Yes, welcome along. Thanks very much for your company. Looking ahead to the action at Aintree, of course, with a focus on the Grand National here in association with Bet UK. Dan Overall is going to be on hand to help guide me through all of the action. And Dan, testing ground conditions up at Aintree, which makes this a tricky punting week. Very much so. Yeah, it's been a relentless few few days, even few weeks, really. March and April have just been unrelenting, especially that side of the country. So we're recording this on Thursday morning, so we haven't exactly got a clear idea just how bad or how testing the ground is going to be. Obviously, we'll find out a bit more today with a view to the national, but it's going to be very hard work, you'd have to imagine. Maybe not as hard work as it was in December. Uh, that meeting was just really, really attritional. I don't think it'll be quite that bad. The going stick readings aren't quite as low, but... Either way, stamina is going to come to the fore, not just in the national, but in all races that we'll, we'll be covering here. Let's have a look then at the Grand National field, the final 34. And there they are on your screen. Who do you fancy for this year's race? What about the betting? Here's how I bet UK have it. 11 to 2, Fab is Corrupt Rambler. 15 to 2, Iron Maximus. 17 to 2, The Plunge Horse, Meeting of the Waters. 9 to Vanillier. 12 Mr. Incredible. 14 to Kitty's Light and Panda Boy. 16 to Limerick Lace, Marla Mission. 20 to Manella Indo, Nassalam. Uh, Noble Yates, of course, another former winner. 25 to 1, Delta Work. Gallia Delito for the Skeletons at 20s at 25s as well. Double Carpet, Capadano, Cocoa Beach, Galvin, Late Night Pass. And it's 40 to 1 and bigger the remainder. I'll leave the betting on your screen in case you fancy one at a big old price. Let's talk about then the leading contenders in the National. We'll start off, of course, with a defending champ. Correct Rambler won the race 12 months ago. Beautiful sunny day on this occasion, delivering for Derek Fox and, Lu and Lucinda Russell. 12 months on, Dan, overall. Will he defend his crown like Tiger Rock? It's going to be a tough ask. I mean, you obviously go back to this day last year and he was a very impressive winner. And I think in the end, the winning margin doesn't really do him justice. You see, he jumped into the lead at the last and then he did what Carrick Rambler typically does. And he kind of just puts his head up in the air, doesn't really want to put it all in. And I think Vanilla, he's definitely been flattered by the proximity he got to within. I think realistically, if Carrick Rambler was the type to put his head down in the finish, he would have won that 10, 15 lengths. And he may well be higher in the handicap as a result. He's still 13 pounds higher. Obviously, it is going to be a much tougher task. He arrived really well in after winning the Ultima on this occasion. This season, I think, is always a tough season for national winners. Obviously, you kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place and going in handicaps and graded races. They've taken the, the graded race route and they're going to the Betfair Chase, which he ran okay in. And then a long break before going to the Gold Cup, obviously, with a view to the national. You have to say, he shaped really well here on testing ground again. He may be a horse that probably prefers better ground, but ran well here. I think a lot are going to have concerns about just how much the Gold Cup's taken out of him. And I think that's going to be a theme across the week in terms of how much of races at Cheltenham taken out of these entry horses. I guess the one saving grace you may have is that, again, he, because he doesn't always put the most in to a finish, maybe he's just saving a bit back. Maybe it won't have as much of an effect as it may on some. And he hadn't had a run for, I think, about 110 days since the Betfair chase. So that may save him, but it's going to be a tougher task of a mark 159, 13 pounds higher this year. I'd say he would probably run run well again. He jumped really well last year. I think maybe just going up that much in the handicap may just stop him from doing the double. That's correct, Rambler. Let's have a look back at the Bobby Joe. I am Maximus winning on this occasion, seeing off Vanillier, who, of course, was second in the Grand National last year. Now, his big concern, we all know what it is, Dan, is his jumping, as we're about to see in this clip. He can put in a right old stinker. He stays longer than the mother-in-law, but is his jumping the big concern? I think it has to be. And yeah, just right on there, you, you've seen a, a theme of his. Obviously, can be sticky, can jump out to his left. Not exactly qualities you're looking for in a national winner, perhaps. But I think if you were to just purely look at this on paper, you're looking at the horse, his connections, his Irish national win. Obviously, that seems so unlikely if you watch that race back. Obviously, he didn't seem to go a yard, jumped terribly, and just got an unbelievably good ride off Paul Town to win that day. That was to, to break his novice status over fences. But on paper, he looks the ideal candidate. An Irish national winner still seems to be improving. Somehow won the dream more earlier this season as well. I think on that, he just looks a clear standout. But again, that jumping really does hold me back from getting enthusiastic about him. It clearly has to be a concern. He could go either way with these fences. Obviously, some take to it like a Dr. Water and maybe some rather poor jumpers do as well. I mean, Vanillier has not exactly been known for the best jumper either, and he seemed to take relatively well to the national test. So it could be possible. And the other reality is that he hits a couple, but gets very skewy in the air like he often does. 
and he never he's never really sighted and gets behind. That's also a distinct possibility. But on paper, perfect candidate. In reality, he just wouldn't be for me. You mentioned Villiers there, Dan. I think the concerns really for me in the build-up was I, I fancied his chances, but Gavin Cromwell, of course, stating that he thinks he's a better horse on better ground. And that's probably mm. one thing he's not going to get, as we already speak. Uh, at the moment, it's heavy, soft in places on the national course. Would that also be a bit off-putting for you with him? It would, it would be one of the concerns. I wouldn't really be uh, in the Vanillier camp. I prefer my national horse to be either coming here, having won it, or going here for the first time. Obviously, he got close to Corrick Rambler, but as stated, I think he was generally flattered. And while he is now nine pounds better off of Corrick Rambler, I actually don't think that's probably enough to really reverse the form. Clearly, been trained with this race in mind. Obviously, you look at his starts, he's basically been building up in distance all season, starting off over two miles. Jumping can be sketchy. I mean, we know Gavin Cromwell is a, a fabulous target trainer. I'm just not sure if he's capable of doing it this year. I think, again, he's one who could definitely see him running well, staying on into maybe a place, but I think he's vulnerable for win purposes. Let's have a look at a couple of others then, Dan. Let's start with Meeting of the Waters. We'll talk about his win in the Paddy Power shortly, but of course, he's the plunge horse, and this is what happened last time out. Third to Chianti Classico in the Ultima. We'll, of course, get a bit more of a, a notion on this form when, of course, Chianti Classico lines up at entry this week. I'll be honest with you, the concern I've got with him, I know you you quite like his chances, is he going to stay? A lot of people, I read the comments after this race, people saying, oh, he stayed on up again, uh, on again up the hill, as he sort of does here. But you know, four and a quarter miles from three mile one, it, it's going to be a big test of stamina for him. And I'm, I'm not convinced, Dan. Well, I think yeah, that's a query of 90% of the field, to be fair. I think very few of these have form that would definitely suggest they are 100% going to stay a national trip in heavy ground. And I admit that is my concern. See so a seven-year-old novice, generally that's a big red red flag. You'd never really have backed them in previous years, but no more Yates, obviously, a couple of years ago. And I think it's undeniable that the shape of this race is changing. Obviously, we're now down to 34 runners. The fences have become less of a test. It's now not as unique as it once was. So I think that brings your novices, like it does in most normal big handicaps, much closer to the fore. And that run in the Ultima, I thought, was really, really impressive. Like, bearing in mind, Twig and Chianti Classico were prominent throughout in that race, and that's always the place you want to be in an Ultima. You very rarely see Ultima winners come from off the pace. They were in the perfect position. Meeting of the Waters was ridden pretty cold through that. He travelled into the race really well. I think he just had far too much to do. And I think the fact that he rallied after the last there, he wasn't really popped a question before that. All the vibes before that were this is the horse who's really progressive, could be graded level. And I think he's shaped just like he could be there. I thought that was a really encouraging run. If you look at the way he and the Goffer kind of mirrored each other's runs, look where the Goffer finished and look where Meeting of the Waters finished. Meeting of the Waters stayed on really well. Up for, I think it was a very creditable third. He's going to be well in here. And I, I have a feeling that, this has maybe been the long-term target rather than the Ultima. He had a very poor prep going into the Ultima. He missed a couple of engagements, then fell at the first of the DRF. I think that run would have bought him on a fair bit. I think the Nationals probably been the long-term aim with him. I think he's got a really good chance. Despite those slight stamina queries, I think that's a query you could probably have with most of these. So meeting of the waters, I'd be pretty strong on. Dan Strong. And he, of course, here is his winning the Paddy Power, seeing off Panda Boy, who's going to be my main selection in the Grand National. Just love the way he stays on from the back of the last year. Meeting of the waters, as much as uh, I didn't think he was he was stopping a bit in the Ultima, he wasn't stopping here. He was full of running. But I like the way that Panda Boy stayed on in testing ground on this, on this occasion. Of course, he's already got some form over a bit of a marathon trip. He was fifth, of course, in the Irish Grand National back in 2023. But I thought this was a decent enough uh, run in behind. And then, of course, we've got the good fourth at Leopardstown behind Maxim. Gwave Quill in second, but I liked again the way that Panda Boy, from an uncompromising position on the rail, made eye-catching headway. So for me, I'd be all aboard the Panda Boy train. Martin Brazel, he knows what it takes to win one of these races. Of course, he's done it with number six, Valverde. He's brought him along steadily this year. A couple of runs in grade threes where he was disappointing over inadequate trips and stepped up at those two runs at Leopardstown big time on the pick of his form. So Panda Boy for me, Brief word on him, Dan. Do you think I'm talking nonsense or would you give him a chance? Well, no, as you've mentioned, Martin Brazel, just a superb target trader, definitely has his chance. Is weighted to reverse the form meeting of the waters, but I think the comments after Danny Mullins rode him in that paddy pole were quite funny. He was so keen to say, oh, I'm not sure I had that much horse underneath me, you know. I think it was much, I don't think they shouldn't be too harsh on him. And the handicapper didn't exactly mess around. He knew he was just exceedingly well handicapped. He's been trained with this race in mind, Panda Boy. I can see him running a decent race. I think meeting the waters will probably confirm the form personally, but can definitely see the angle for Panda Boy.
Let's stick with some of the Irish train contenders. Why don't we talk about a JP McManus one first? I think he's got five runners in the race. I'm sure there'll be a couple of specials if you uh, fancy a JP McManus owned a winner of the contest. And Mark Walsh, his retained rider in Ireland, has chosen Nimerick Lakes. Here she's winning the Mayor's Chase, seeing off Dino Blue. Now, one thing we know about a Dan is she'll, of course, be suited by testing ground. The big concern, we've already mentioned it with Meeting on the Waters and others, is she's untried beyond three miles. What chance do you give her? Yeah, and that would generally be, again, from a trends perspective, wouldn't be ideal. Obviously, he did run well in the Troy Town, was a staying on second to Cocoa Beach on that occasion. So that would be promising enough signs that she'll have a good go at getting the trip. Obviously, conditions came right for her in the Mayor's Chase on this occasion. Dino blew the speed horse, Limerick Lace, the real relentless st stamina really kicked in up the hill in very attritional conditions. I wouldn't read too much into the jockey bookings. I think it's very much of a muchness. I think Paul Tannen was always going to ride I Am Maximus. Obviously, the Irish mm. national performance, I think he is pivotal to I Am Maximus' success. And obviously, Danny Mullins Road, Meeting of the Waters in the Paddy Power. So I think it just was more of a, a logical booking rather than affirmations of who's number one, two, three, etc. I wouldn't get too bogged down into looking at that. Really likeable mayor. Obviously, mayors haven't won this since 1951. And obviously, we'll cover another mayor later. But again, conditions should be in her favour. But I say stamina maybe a slight concern at this extreme of a distance. Yeah, she would be in my shortlist. I think the Troy Town form is solid enough and she's shown that she can handle, you know, one of those big handicaps. But I think that would be the concern that uh, would be uh, the fact she's untried beyond it. Another one that we've got to mention, that one in my th in my five actually is Marlon Mission. I haven't got much VT for him, but I've got a Carlisle second here in the Colin Parker. Of course, uh, we're second in the Coral Trophy. He's been off the track since. He's another Dan who we know is going to be suited by conditions. And really, this has been the target all season after the Coral Trophy. He's already got form over three mile, over three miles. He, of course, fell when still in contention, you'd say, in the National Hunt chase. He, he led for most of that. What do you make of his chances here, Dan? If any horse deserves a big race, it's Marlon Mission. And he, he's broken my heart, especially in that National Hunt chase. I backed him on that occasion and... I think at the time I was very split on whether he would have stayed on and won that day. And I think after seeing his run at Newbury uh, in the old Hennessy, I think he probably would have won that. Re shaped really well at Newbury when we last saw him. It would be a big ask to come back and win this after such a long time off the track. I know John McConnell is a capable trainer of getting a horse ready for an occasion like this. But to come here after not having run 130 plus days is a mammoth ask. He's a horse that looks like he'll be suited to it. I think he'll run an admirable race. I just think that lack of a, a prep run recently will tell in the end. Gordon Elliott is more handed in the contest. Let's start with Delta Work and Galvin. This is a look back, of course, at their cross-country tussle. You'd say that Galvin is clearly going to need better ground, but Delta Work, how much do you read into comments? You know, uh, Gordon Elliott this week saying he's probably in the form of his life. He's never, ha never had him better. The concern for me, probably more with Delta Work, is his age. He's not getting any younger, is he? He's now 11 despite how well handicapped you think he might be in this sort of contest and how well he goes in soft ground, that's a bit of a nagging worry for me. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, 11-year-olds are capable of winning a national, but again, we, I think, like I mentioned earlier, with the race, the shape of the race changing, I think there will be more an emphasis on younger horses moving forward. But I think Dell's work has a really good chance of finishing in the frame here. Obviously, again, those those comments are very positive. Gordon isn't exactly shy of bigging one up. We've seen that time and time again. But And maybe missing the cross-country on this occasion will be a bit of a blessing in disguise because he saves him from having a hard race. I think blinkers go on for the first time. They tried the opposite with cheek pieces last year, and he was running pretty well. Last year, when I think falling at the 21st, relatively soft fall in the end, seemed to be jumping well up until that point. I think he's got definite place potential. 25 to 1 is a reasonable each way price. As you say, I think he may just find one or two, two will handicapped and too progressive at this stage, but can definitely see him taken to the test on ground that he would like. No, I can definitely see the case for a place claim. Uh, another one that's been backed from the Shrewds uh, from the Elliott Stable is Coco Beach, who's 33 to 1 currently with Bet UK. This, of course, was his win at Punchestown. Many thought he'd go very close in the cross country. You've already touched upon a, a Troy Town win as well in his back catalogue. Uh, there hasn't been that many greys win the race, has there? That's another one of those stats and trends some people like. But he's an interesting runner at a big price and, of course, ran in the race last year, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. He's one of my favourite horses in training, Coco Beach. For years and years, he's just coming back in these major handicaps and just proving to defy almost unrealistic rises in the weights. Obviously, won the Troy Town earlier this season, ran really well over the fences in the beach or in that was a day where we had really attritional conditions. I'm not sure he stays this far. Uh, he's had a couple of attempts now in the National, and I don't think he's convinced as a Forestayer at this. Really nice horse, but 
I think, off a mark in the 160s when he hasn't exactly proved himself to be laden with stamina for this extreme a test. Yeah, he wouldn't be for me, but a horse I really have a lot of time for. A couple of others. Noble Yates, of course, is a former winner of the race. Harry Cobden is in the plate on this occasion. Of course, he's been plying his trade over hurdles of late. What do you make of him as a former winner? Can he uh, replicate this victory from a couple of years ago? I think it'll be tough off Mark 165. Obviously, there aren't many national winners who can come back after winning it a couple of years ago to do it again. Obviously, stamina is probably he's probably the one horse in the race you'd have no stamina queries about. Obviously, I'd imagine the ground maybe not ideal, but should handle it enough. But I think off his current mark, he's got a, a massive task at the weights. That's Noble Yates. Another one I just want to quickly mention down from the Irish contingent is Adamantly Chosen, who has attracted a little bit of support. For me, I'm not sure if he's streetwise enough for, for a national, but this was a good performance at Down Royal. Ramage, of course, who runs in the race again. What do you make of him, or is there any of the other Mullins battalion that, that could outrun their odds? Yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily be on board with the money for Adam that he chose. I think uh, over fences is proven best in small fields. He's been a horse I've really struggled to get right. So he seemingly had been at his best over intermediate trips going right-handed. Ben's been pretty hit and miss this season. Again, that was a small field race where a few of those, I think, mean, classic getaway just didn't stay, the three mile two. And obviously Roy Maj, I think they only had one eyes towards the national anyway. So I'm not sure what the strength of that form is worth. And again, I'm not sure he's crying out for this really extreme test either. Uh, we should really, both of us, be backing Capadano if you're going on names, obviously given our names <laughs> sorts of features in the horse. Uh, of course, here he is winning the Cotswold. I thought he ran okay in the Ryanair. Stayed on from an uncompromising position to finish fourth. But he's another where stamina concerns are probably highlighted. I know he was pulled up in the race last year. And that's kind of the story of some of these. They've had previous experience, but they're probably tough to fancy even 12 months on. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, it's I know, again, off 161, it's a, a mammoth task. And I'm not really a big fan of horses who've had a go and haven't got the job done in the Nationals to come back and do it again. The form of that Cotswold chase at the time looked as if it would be a bit sketchy. I think all bar stay away Faye were going into that with a lot of questions to answer. And obviously stay away Faye is pretty very disappointing in the Brown Advisory thereafter. So I'm not really sure what he achieved. Running the Ryanair was perfectly acceptable. Obviously staying on its fourth there, but again, a big task off 161 in the National. And Dan, the final Irish horse I wanted to mention is Mr. Incredible. Um, a lot of women over the years have, have told me where to go and, you know, been very... And this horse has done the same, really. He's, he's my cliff woman. If I could have one, he's my cliff horse. He's done me <laughs> on numerous occasions, including on this occasion, where I thought he was thundering home before that terrible era. Um, he ran well, of course, in the Midlands. National, for me... I don't like to be rude, but he, he is a lovable rogue and I can't have this lovable rogue even look at him up the hill here. I just cannot have him winning a national. I would I would have to quit the sport if he won the national. I think it would be that bad. I just can't have him at any price. 12 to 1, I think, is ridiculously skinny for a rogue. Well, you've set yourself up there with that Cohen Evan. You? You've got to get that clipped up, ready to go if, <laughs> if he crosses the line come Saturday. Uh, look, he is clearly very tricky. I think he's... in pretty self-confessed Patrick Mullins' pet project to just try and get this horse right. Has shown a lot of ability. Obviously, he was running well in the National. He's probably one of those you'd excuse a run in the National last year because the saddle snapped, I think, at the 24th when he was going pretty well. Obviously, a bit too early to tell exactly how he would have finished, but the run in the Midlands National was encouraging. A hard race, though, to have going into to a Grand National itself. Obviously, that was his first run for a while. Could he bounce? Could he come on for it? A bit of unsure on that one, but... Yeah, I think he's been found enough now in the market to leave him alone at 12s. Well, he went off at 14-1 to last year as well. I mean, he, he was fancied for the race 12 months ago. So he's not without a chance, but I, I can't have him winning a national. Let's talk about the Brits then. Uh, Kitty's Light, I think, is probably the shortest, along with, of course, Corrit Rambler. This, of course, is the Bet365 win. It would, of course, be a very emotional story. Everything around Christian Williams and his daughter as well, Betsy. But sneaks in at the bottom, number 34. What do you make of Kitty's Light? Yeah, they had a nervous wait, especially today, obviously, as, as we were getting the declarations coming through. But he snuck in. It's been the, the plan all season. Obviously, Christian Williams has risen to prominence through the training ranks as being a superb target trainer in these staying handicaps. Kitty's Light and Captain All put him on the map, so to speak. And what a horse Kitty's Light has been over the past few years. Obviously, he has a glittering CV. He's one who's not going to appreciate heavy ground. If it was a good ground national, you wouldn't really readily dismiss him but I think on heavy ground I think that's probably just done his chances Okay, next up is Nassalam 
Uh, this is the Topham. I've had to go a fair way back for a bit of bit of footage here. But of course, he's won a Welsh national this year. He wasn't without support in the Gold Cup, but probably flying a bit too high and was, of course, pulled up, never was really travelling. But look, we know he'll be suited by the ground. He's one that you can probably bank on staying, given the way he finished off at Chepstow. And we know the ground will be in his favour. I think he'll run into a place. I think he's decent value, about 20, 25 to 1 with Bet UK to do that. But what do you make in Asalan? I remember I backed him for that top and thinking he wanted to drop back in trip to kind of those intermediate on heavy ground was perfect oh, yes. for him. And then he's gone obviously into bolt up in the Welsh National Trial and bolt up in the Welsh National itself. So it shows you what I know. He's been always I found tricky to kind of get a hold of. Again, that Welsh National win, very impressive. Those winning distances at Chepstow on heavy ground can often be massively exaggerated because of those conditions. So few handle it. Again, if you were going to point down a couple of horses who looked assured of staying, he'd definitely be, if not top of that list, he'd be right up there. Obviously, based on that Welsh national success, I wouldn't be too harsh on the Gold Cup. He's just not good enough to compete at that. But again, off a mark 161, like it would be a, a mammoth performance for him to to back up a Welsh national and win a Grand National off that kind of weight. Like you say, could definitely see a reality where he's plugging on plugging on into a place. But off 161 for win purposes, yeah, it just wouldn't be for me. Of course, a great story would be Late Night Pass. And of course, the only other Irish horse towards the top of the bedding we didn't mention was Manella Indo. That's because, of course, features in this VT. Late Night Pass winning on this occasion. Manella Indo in fourth. You had Galvin uh, flattering to deceive as well at Cheltenham on this occasion. Let's talk about both of those then, Dan. Late Night Pass and Manella Indo. I guess the concern for Indo backers would be the ground. Late Night Pass, what do you make of that one? Obviously, great horse, great story, and what they've done with him. Obviously, got a good win in the cross country course in December. Obviously, in the handicap, I ran well previously in November as well. Came on for that. I do, yeah, I do find him a bit difficult to assess. Obviously, he was a prolific point to point, a really good in that sphere. He's he's now finding himself off quite a, a lofty mark for a horse with that background as an eleven year old, even off one four nine. I know he's not carrying a lot of weight, but it's a big rating for a horse who has the kind of profile he does. Will be an unbelievable story. But yeah, I'm just just wouldn't be for me. Manila Rindo, as you say, probably wants the ground a bit better. I think on, on what we know, and but look at his handicap mark, his handicap mark is very fair based on the horse that we know he is. I, again, he is one of those. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a bit of money around for him, especially if there are signs that the ground isn't as extreme as we may think it might be. But again, it, it just there are signs I think he would be a bit vulnerable in a national at this stage of his career off the mark he is on. Finally, final I'm going to mention, we've spent 22 minutes, we've analysed many of them, Gallia de la Toe for the Team Skelton. Now, this is one that you think is going to run well, Dan. Yeah, I've, I'm clearly not alone in that because she's been well supported in, in recent days as well. Was as big as 50s, now I halved in price. And obviously, she, we've generally found her in these kind of races, these small field mares races. I don't think they really suit her. Like, she's a real thorough stayer, and I think she's just kind of been crying out for real extreme tests of stamina. And we saw that when she ran in the Classic. That was her first run in the handicap chase of that nature. Finished a really good second to my silver lining, giving her £20. Obviously, she went on to place in two more major staying handicap chases thereafter. They pulled well clear. So the form of that is rock solid. I'd almost put a line for a run last time out. I think even Harry Skelton said after that run in the Classic that all eyes were on the National. So I don't think she would have exactly been A1 going into that race when we last saw her. She'll handle the heavy ground, no problem. That performance of the Classic would give you a very good indication that she'll stay this kind of trip. I think she'll handle conditions. She may just find one or two a bit too good. She may not have the class necessary, but I think at a, a reasonable each way price, she can definitely finish in the frame. Okay, 25 to 1. We've we we've mentioned every horse that's under 33 <laughs> to 1. So clearly there's now going to be the first five, 40 to 1 and bigger. Just briefly, Dan, any on that screen? Ra Marj, of course, run one in the race before. Can't have Statler after his performances this season. Ain't that a shame? It'll be a good story. Don't fancy the Goffer. Don't really fancy Foxy Jats. Don't fancy Manella Kruner. Any of those bigger prices that you would give a nod to? Maybe Fruit Delen would be one of the more interesting ones. Obviously, I'm still maybe hearkening back to when he ran behind Lompresse in the Brown Advisory as it was then. Like he was shaping well when falling. Obviously, had a load of class. Bit of a mixed campaign this season, really over fences, running the Potemps. Wouldn't surprise if it's been a bit of a long-term plan and still isn't thoroughly exposed, but does have some questions to answer. Obviously, has had his issues since falling in that Brown advisory. But I guess for the profile of a horse, like he wouldn't be a million miles away. So maybe him at 66 to 1 would be one of the more interesting outsiders. Okay, there you go from Dan. Right, let's have a look then at our top five. I'm going to go first. Uh, good luck with what you fancy. I'm going to go with Panda Boy. 
Limerick Lace, Marla Mission, Nassalam, and Iron Maximus. Panda Boy, look, I think he's been prime for the race. I think Martin Braz has brought him along steadily this year. Two eye-catching runs in defeat over both hurdles and fences of late. He'll be suited by the ground, and I think he'll go close. Limerick Lace, I just think, has the class, but also if she stays, I think she can get involved, and obviously with the ground in her favour, I think she can run into a place. Similar conditions apply to Marla Mission. I definitely think he's got place claims. I do agree with Dan's comments, though, about him being off the track for a long time, but hopefully they've got him primed for this and he can run well. <clears throat> Nassalam, similar comments apply. I definitely think you'll finish in the first five or six. Do make sure with your bookmakers, including Bet UK, are they going first six places, first seven, first eight, as it will differ. But definitely worth having a look at offers there. But Nassalam as well. And I am Maximus. If he jumps round, he's got to surely be in the places, particularly on testing ground. So that's my five. I'll let Dan talk you through his five. So I've got Meeting of the Waters as my number one. Obviously, there maybe are slight stamina reserves, but I, I just love his profile coming into the race. What they run in the Ultima was very indicative of a horse still very much on an upward curve. I think Gallia de la Toe can replicate Magic of Light in finishing second in a national. Obviously, no mayor has won the national since 1951. I think that weight may continue, but I think she's got a, a sneakily good profile for the race, and I think she is crying out for a test like this. Delta Work, I think, will run a very creditable race in third. Obviously, I think he's probably going to its best chance in my in my view. Ground or suit should stay. He was running well last year when falling. I think he'll give a good good show. Karak Rambler in fourth. I think he'll give a bold attempt to doing the double. I think he'll just find the, the increase in weight and maybe a slightly hard race in the Gold Cup a bit too much. And Marlon Mission will give a bold sight for a long way. I think he'll just tire towards the end, having had a probably not ideal prep coming into the race. So there you go. We've covered nine horses there. Hopefully we can find the winner in the Grand National. Very brief look coming up then at the rest of Friday and Saturday's card. Okay, we're just going to fly through a couple of the other races. We'll start on Friday. I know that you're thinking nine or four Fab in the opener, seven to two Iroco, Canty Classico and Hartwood at fours. 8-1 to one, Giovinco and Broadway Boy at 8. I like the chances of Iroco in this. Look back to his Warwick win on his chasing debut. He was impressive here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Greeno and Guero then had to rush to get him back for the Turners. I thought he finished a decent enough fifth there, given he hadn't come, on, come into the race of a prep run. I think the step up to three miles will really suit. We know he'll be suited by ground conditions. I just think it could be tailor-made for him to go close. I'd be wanting to take on, I know the way you're thinking, purely based on his jumping. I think the main contender who could take him on is Chianti Classico, who Dan likes. Yeah, I think that run in the Ultima is just a really solid piece of form. Obviously, I must have to think so if I think Meeting of the Waters has got such a good chance in the Grand National, but he jumps like a bunny, Chianti Classico. It really was impressive on this occasion, was always in the right place, jumped really well. I think he had a fair bit left in the end as well and obviously proved, crucially, the handles pretty testing ground. Obviously, the day Day one of Cheltenham was, as we know, really attritional conditions and seemed to relish those. Had been mapped out with that race in mind for a while. So this may be now he's kind of forced into this company. But I think at the prices, considering this depth of handicap tends to be far in, in superior to the Kim Muir. And I know the way you're thinking is such a short price for that. I think Chianti Classico is definitely the bet in the race. I will give a mention to Broadway Boy because I am, if not the chair, I think I'm vice chair with Willie Twist and Davis of his fan club. Absolutely adore the horse. I think wherever he goes, I'll be just keen to see him do well. But I think coming off a long break on heavy ground, cheek pieces on for the first time, so he has had clearly his issues, hence why he missed the Brown Advisory at Cheltenham. He's got a few questions to prove at this point, but hopefully he runs well because I just adore that horse. Yeah, I was going to set you up for a chat about Broadway Boy. So you've yeah. done that nicely. And then I Rocco for me. Next race that we're going to quickly look at is the 220. Katira is uh, the favourite. Seven to one, making headway at eight. Boomborn nines in the waterside at nines as well. Springwell Bay and Theatre Man at tens. A Castle de Mott, Woody Mullins, I think, thinks he'll go close. Eleven to one, twelve to one about Django Bay, Uncle Bert and Champagne Twist. Brief look at this purely because I fancy two of the price here. <clears throat> Excuse me, in the waterside first up. This, of course, is a win at Aintree earlier this year. They had plenty of fences uh, hurdles doled out on this occasion because, for once, the sun was out in uh, in England, but. He's then one nicely at Lingfield. I think he's open to more improvement off a mark of 129. And I think he could go close. The other one would be Champagne Twist because he saw off Pit Rock on this occasion. And Pit Rock has since gone on to beat, uh, went, uh, was 
beat, sorry, in the waterside at Ascot prior to this performance. So really, if you're looking at literal form lines, both of those have got chances purely based on that bit of form that I think is quite strong. So Champagne Twist is 12 to 1, which I don't really get because I think that horse is open to a bit more improvement. And in the waterside at 9 for Cobden and Nichols, they'll be hopeful of a few winners. So that's a look at the 220. Next race to have a brief look at then is the 255. Mystical Power, 7 to 4. Fab, Firefox, 11 to 4. Dysart Enos, of course, runs in this 9 to 2. Mr. Giff at 9s. Golden Ace, bizarrely, is a massive price at 10s. Lump Sum at 14s. Look Away, 16s. Personal Ambition at 20s. And Dan, you're with the Mystical Power form line here from the Supreme. Yeah, I think that's kind of the. the clear form line you kind of have to be looking at first when assessing this race obviously looked to have come there with a running run on the outside obviously got to the last jumped it in ahead in the end Slade Steel being a confirmed two and a half mile horse with plenty of stamina in the slowest run supreme we've seen in many a year I think that his excess stamina has just proven the all but I think mystical power showed on this occasion that he's got the most speed in the race so he had to make up a lot of ground to get into that winning position I think up the hill has just proven a bit too much for him in the end I know a lot of people fancy Firefox to reverse the form and he didn't exactly have the cleanest run round he can't deny that but I think maybe at certain stages it's because he almost lacked the tactical speed necessary to get into the position which was required I think the market may be shifting too much towards Firefox and not looking at the clear obvious one which is mystical power and I think he's probably the best two mole natural novice hurdler in this race and i think they'll ride him hopefully to be a test of speed they'll ride him patiently as it suits at aintree and it, i think if the ground again isn't a bog his turn of foot at the end could prove the difference just a brief word down on dice enos and golden ace just have a look at dice enos's win at cheltenham earlier on this term of course was ruled out on the day of the mayor's novice had beaten golden ace previously uh, in the in a career what do you make of fergal o'brien's charge yeah i guess that's maybe one of the consequences of almost going like, going into a season, working back from one race alone. Obviously, these horses can have little setbacks and just rule them out, and all of a sudden you're scrambling for an alternative. Obviously, has looked very impressive. Hurdling hasn't always been the smoothest. Obviously, this was a decent performance, beating Beat the Bat. Uh, I'm not sure necessarily it's up to this kind of standard, but obviously has beat Golden Ace in the bumper here last year. I think Golden Ace was very impressive in a relative test of speed. At Cheltenham in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle, that definitely suited her. Proved she also handles the ground. I think the strength of and depth of the form of the geldings is probably just superior to both of those. And I think the Supreme form will probably come to the fore in the end. Okay. And by the way, if you saw that VT there, that horse was okay. That fell at the last at Cheltenham. Next race we're going to have a look at is the Melling. I'll just bring you the betting for that. Two to one five is John Bond, Protect Trap, 11 to four. Pick Dorhi at threes. Envoir Elena at 11s. Conflated Easy Games at 16s. And Menela Drama at 50s. And I think the market's got this bang wrong. Uh, I'd be with Pick Dorhey here. <clears throat> John Bon, of course, has claims, of course, stepping up to two and a half miles. I'd be wanting to take on Protectra and, and Envoir Elen. I thought that was a pretty tough race in the Ryanair. Pick Dorhey's had this on his mind since, of course, that win in the Ascot chase where he was very impressive. Uh, he won this last year in good style. And I just think he's open to more improvement again this season. He's been campaigned nicely by Nichols. This has been the long-term plan. And I think he, I think the ground won't be a massive problem. And with that in mind, given this has been the target, he can come out on top. John Bond is a definite worry. I think based on how Sergino and Shishkin run today, that might also see him get even more support. Dan, what do you make of the Melling? Uh, just having another angle of Pickdor, he's winning it last year. Where would you be siding <laughs> if I forced you to? This is confirmation bias from you. You're showing as many angles as possible. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, I've got to. I'll get about 15 more if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Superb production work. No, I, I found this race really difficult to assess, to be honest. Obviously, John Barney's favourite based on the idea that he is probably the most talented horse in this race, but question marks over the stamina, the form, obviously on heavy ground as well. I, I think they have to be pretty prevalent in anyone's thought process. Pick Dory is a solid option. Protector out the request. Can he replicate that Ryanair again? I'm not sure it was the deepest of Ryanair's. Obviously, Envoy LM represents that form as well. I just found it a really difficult race to assess. So it'll be a race I'll be sitting out for betting purposes. Okay, this is John Bon, of course, with his latest win in the Tingle Creek. I guess he's also got jumping concerns for some, given his shuddering error that he made in the Clarence House. So that's a little look then at the betting for uh, entry on Friday. A couple of other races. We have got the Topham. I've got no real strong fancy in that. I don't I think you'll leave that alone as well, Dan. Um, so we'll go on to the 440, 11 to 4 Jukebox Man, 130 Dancing City, 4's Reading Tommy Wrong, 9 to 2 Shanna Bob, and you like an 8 to 1 shot here in Croke Park. Yeah, I think he's got a good chance here. I, I'm just kind of keen to oppose those at the head of the market all around in the Albert Bartlett because that race was really brutal, as it often is. 
it's not an easy to, race to turn around from, especially when the ground is heavy. So I'm kind of keen to oppose the jukebox man in particular. Who had a really hard race. As you've reading Tommy Wrong pulled up early on. Dancing City ran well in third. But of those in behind, obviously, Shanna Bob's got a long absence to overcome. Missed the Albert Bartlett because of the yard form. But I think Croke Park is probably the solid one in here. Looks ideally suited to this kind of test. Goes well in heavy ground and looks a real forest day when winning the Monksfield over two and a half miles. The form of that is mixed, but Gordon Nelly has pr a pretty solid string of novice hurdles, especially in this kind of division. He knows whereabouts they all lie. I think he'll definitely outrun that prize of eight to one. I think that's a really solid each way option in a race where below him, you're probably struggling to find one with the quality to win a race like this, whereas all those above him, Barshan and Bob, had a really brutal race in the Albert Bartlett. OK, that's Croke Park. Then a gallop through Saturday. Quickly, a couple of fancies here. The 120, 9 to 2, 5 is West Balboa. 6 to 1, Cuthbert Dibble. Gweeny Boy, Johnny Who at 8. Mon Morale at 9s. And I think I thought Dan was going to be supporting me here, but I'm, I'm all over Cuthbert Dibble here, Dan. I think he's got yeah. outstanding claims. Uh, good third in the Potemps. I think the big thing is, of course, he's already won at Haydock on heavy ground. OK, continues to go up the weights, but I think he's only gone up a pound for this. I know the concern would clearly be uh, translating the Cheltenham form and whether he's over this. But I thought he made appeal in this in what is always a very competitive event. But I thought at that price, he was worth a couple of quid. I, I really like Cuthbert Dibble, as we know. He's been a, a popular horse on this show for me. I, my concern now with him is he's had three very hard races in heavy ground in a pretty short space of time. Like, I was concerned going into the Potemps about him. I didn't back him for the Potemps final on the back of those two runs prior, especially that qualifier was really tough. And obviously, he's had another hard race there. If he can back that up again and put in a really good performance, that would be impressive. But he's a horse I'll have on side for novice chases next year. The one I'm actually going with here is a horse who's had my pants down multiple times. I will try to get this horse to win a race at some stage. Please, God, let it be at Aintree on Saturday. It's Red Risk, who is a bit of an enigma. And I think he needs a certain set of conditions. Three miles, galloping left-handed track, soft ground, and time between his races. He has all four of those here. Admittedly, you do have to kind of overcome a disappointing run last time at Haydock, where I think maybe the track a bit too sharp. Just didn't seem to be going a yard on that occasion. But you go back to his run in the West Yorkshire hurdle behind Botox has. He should have won that race. Probably a bit disappointing because he clouted every single hurdle in the home straight, only lost a length in the end. That race has worked out pretty well with Dashiell Drasher there. Botox has obviously has won well subsequently as well. Freddie Gingell back on board for the first time since his short head second in the 2023 Lanzarotti. On that occasion, he was beaten by West Balboa. Obviously, she's now favourite for this race. Red Riss is seven pounds better off with her for a short head defeat, admittedly just over a year ago. But that would bode well for his chances of, for as much as she may have progressed, of at least getting relatively close to her. And given there's a massive discrepancy in prices, I think she's obviously market leader. Red Risk is 33 to 1. I think there's a chance that he could get a lot closer than the market suggests. And cheek pieces, which he looks like he desperately needs some kind of headgear, go on for the first time. So I think that's a positive as well. 33 to 1, red risk then with Better UK in that contest. I didn't have betting for the Mersey when we came on air, but we both got the chances down a brighter days ahead. Caldwell Potter, of course, is an interesting runner on debut for Paul Nichols. Let's talk about brighter days ahead first. Of course, that second to Golden Ace. Well, I think Jack Kennedy did, said she was just too keen early on. Hopefully, she'll settle better over this trip. Uh, clearly, a lot of burnt fingers as well on this occasion. But what are you, why are you so keen on her in the Mersey? I say massive talking horse, probably the most biggest talking horse going into the Cheltenham Festival. Ultimately, this became a sprint, and I just don't think it suited. Her. Obviously, I'd say the keenness has probably come for the fact they've gone absolutely no pace whatsoever. I think all the jockeys were conscious that the ground was so testing, or they didn't want to make it into a real grueling race. But I think the one horse who would have been suited by that, probably Jay DeGruji to a certain extent as well, who's obviously come out and won subsequently, would have been brighter days ahead. I think stepping up to two and a half miles is going to be no issue whatsoever. We've already seen she's got plenty of stamina. I think that will really suit her, as will the heavy ground. And before that race, she looked a really classy mare, like ooze class in her last run. I thought she'd be able to overcome the drop in trip because she just had so much class. Didn't quite, wasn't quite able to, but I don't think that's really going to take away from her. And I think in opposition, obviously, Coldwell Potter is very interesting, but the form of that win at Christmas is sketchy because the ground was so testing. And all of those kind of behind him that Willie Mullins is representing here probably aren't his exact A team. Whereas I think Gorn Elliott thinks Brighter Days Ahead is the absolute star of his yard or could be moving forward. So I think she's got a really solid chance here. And obviously this run, as you can see, where Colbert Potter run, uh, beat Predators Gold in second, who hasn't exactly threatened the form that much, but this was really testing conditions. We know he'll handle the ground, but there have to be a few questions on his first run for Paul Nichols on just how straight he is and 
if I'm two and a half miles, he'll really want this at this stage. Remember to watch that race live on Racing TV. And a final race, I don't think either of us have got a fancy, but we'll just mention the betting for it, is uh, a stairs hurdle on Saturday. Four and quarter, only a five to two fab. Cider Burley defending champ, 130. Six is Crambo. Botox has buddy one and strong leader at 10. Hewitt, good old Hewitt at 12, along with Hidden Valley Lake. Obviously, this race has changed complexion, Dan, because we now have no Tiupu and even no Irish point. Just a quick brief look at Flooring Porter, of course, who was second in the stairs hurdle to uh, Tiupu. We've got Buddy One, uh, Dashiell Drasher. Crambo was disappointing, of course. I'm not asking you for a selection, but where would you, if I had to pin you down, go here? I'd say this is the story of the Stairs Hurdle Division in Britain. If you just look look past the first four now, it's the same five or six all in a clump yet again. I think that kind of shows you the general state of the Stairs Hurdle Division this season, especially this side of the Irish Sea. Florin Porter ran well here, really good run. Obviously, they were in Aring between that and the National Hunt Chase. I think that running second here has proven that decision worthy. Obviously, if T. Hooper or Irish Point were to run here, they would be the clear favourites. But I think in their absence, if I was going to have a bet, I'd probably go with Rob Cause, representative in the end of Hidden Valley Lake. Obviously, still could be quite progressive. Made his reappearance rather recently and ran really well. I think three miles on heavy ground won't be an issue for him. And again, when I look at the head of the market, I see a lot of familiar exposed faces. He could be the up-and-comer in this division. This is Sider Burley winning the race 12 months ago. And yeah, problems for Rob Core because uh, that would be me as well. 12 to 1, I think, is quite a big price for Hidden Valley Lake in what is what looks quite an open renewal of that stairs hurdle. So there you go. There's your whistle stop tour of all the racing across Friday and Saturday. You can watch it all live on Racing TV. I'll just briefly remind you, Dan, your nap is going to be. Bright days ahead. I, I think she's got a cracking chance. Obviously, the mayor's obvious, uh, disappointed a lot of people, but up in trip, stronger pace to aim at, heavy ground, no problem. I don't think she's up against the absolute stars of the novice hurdle division here. So I think she's got a really good chance. And a reminder of Dan's selections in the Nash. Meeting of the Waters, Gallia de la Toe, Delta, Quirk Rambler and Marla Mission. My nap is Mystical Power. I think you can easily make the case for that one. I also think, I hope they ride this horse a bit more prominently. I think it's still got that turn of foot, as Dan says. And if the ground's not too testing, I think Mystical Power can come out on top in the 255 tomorrow. And in the Nash... Panda Boy, Limerick Lace, Marla Mission, Nassalam, and I am Maximus. Prefer that order, but I wouldn't mind any order as long as I can finish in the first <laughs> five. That's a look then at the National. Thanks very much to Dan for all his company. Check him out on Twitter as well at Over and Clear. Thanks to Bet UK for their sponsorship of all the shows throughout the jump season. That's your lot for the jumps from the form book. Thanks to Dan, Katie, Andy, Harry, Tom, and some of the other guests that we've had on the show. And thanks to you at home for watching. Good luck with your bets. The £1 million Grand National, the world's most famous chase. Watch it live on Racing TV. <laughs>